Did you guys listen to me? Did you watch my last video? Well, today I have another fantastic cherry picking hunt story to show you guys. Very excited and various reasons why I bought these uh, particular items. So you're gonna wanna watch this. And thank you for tuning in. Um, yes, I, you know, when silver goes up, I, I just have different spending habits. I, I, you know, I do like to buy, you know, your, your silver bars and all that stuff. I just, I'm having a very tough time finding them. I don't want to pay $220 for a five ounce bar of silver. I just, I just don't, you know, um, it seems like I get much better deals here. And uh, when I know what I'm looking for, it's very important to know your varieties. Have PCGS.com at your fingertips. Um, you can be in a comfortable environment when you are shopping for coins. So um, let's just move on to a few coins here. So you can see I have a Franklin here. Um, I don't trust this grading company. It will be cracked out, but the special thing is it's it's the date that I'm interested in. Um, let's zoom in a little more. A little more. If you watched my video I did yesterday, I talked about 1953 Denver's. And yeah, this one's very nice, 53 Denver. Now, I'm gonna put this on my microscope and I will show you um, what I'm looking for. Let's, uh, well, it, as you can see it right there, um, we're looking for the obverse die clash and it's on here. You can see he's got like a little booger hanging out of his nose right there, as you can see. Um, I'll put this on the microscope so you can get a better look. There, that's much better. You can definitely see, um, Right there, there's a clash mark, a obverse die clash. Um, this coin, honestly, since it's been graded, I believe it's uh, full bell lines, but it's really, really close. Um, and this coin, not full with not full bell lines, but if it hits a mid state 64 with the obverse die clash, you're looking at uh, I can't remember what that we um, about 300 bucks. So let's look on the back here. And I score big time on this one. But what I'm looking for down here for full bell lines is, is right here. There's a, there's some damage here. And I know if this was not here, you can see how the lines wrap all the way around, which is really devastating. Very devastating for this coin. It would add a lot more premium to this coin. Uh, if you go over here, it definitely is wrapped all the way around. It looks like a little bit of a lamination going on right here too as well. Very interesting. Um, but this is like 99.9% .9 full bell lines. It would be 100% if uh, this is really uh, iffy right here with this. Uh, looks like a, a mark like another coin hit this coin. And that's very devastating for this. Um, it would not, in my opinion, get full bell lines. But still, um, it's pretty valuable with no with no bell lines okay back here that's what we got 53 Denver all right let's move on to the next coin and this is what I like to find I like to find a coin that's graded and it was mis uh, designated with the Bugs Bunny variety or whatever it has um, we're gonna put it under the microscope um, so he gave me five bucks off um, the coin as it is just like this, full bell lines, Minsa 64, 1953 Denver. It's worth approximately 220. Um, depends on auction sales and stuff. So I'm glad I got it for a little less than what PCGS recommends. So let's take it under the microscope and see what we got. This is the 1953 Philadelphia Bugs Bunny variety FS401 full bell lines from PCGS. I'm going to show you exactly uh, what we're looking for. You see, you want to look for a face that looks exactly like this. You got to have those die file lines going horizontally across the face and up toward the north part of the cheek all the way up to the eye. Okay, so now let's look at my my image on the microscope here. 
we have exactly that same thing happening right here. Let's zoom in all the way. There we go. We have the same thing happening here. This is the same thing. Um, we have some stuff going here. Maybe this could be the obverse die clash. But let's go back because sometimes they're very, very close. So we, we want to diagnose this coin. Let's go back and, and see what the obverse die clash looks like on the 53 as well. And it's pretty much the same same price category in that grade as well. So we'll zoom in and see if it's got the little dangles hanging on his nose here. Wait for this to load up. By the way, beautiful toning on this one, on this example here. There we go. It doesn't have, it's about the same thing. It's about the same thing. So there's very hard to distinguish on the Philadelphia, but I'm having the exact same things happening here. And let's go back to see what the values are on a coin like this. Um, Philadelphia. Mint State 64, you're looking at three and a quarter, three and a quarter. I paid 185 for it. That's not, the old price was 175. So very good pick that it's on an upward trend as well. Um, let's continue and see what other goodies we got today. Now I found a variety on the 1957 uh, proof. Um, that's TDR. I believe that's triple die reverse. Let's take a peek. And actually, on the front of his face, you can see his eye is missing. It's losing some detail on this one. Um, as you can see, the field goes right into his eye. Um, that's all missing right there. That's actually pretty uh, uh, impressive to see that on a proof coin. So what we want to look for is on the reverse here. Um, you can see Euplermbus Unum is tripled. Uh, if I can zoom in a little bit more for you guys, you can see. There we go. I apologize for that. There, and you can see it very, very clearly right there. Now, my coin does appear to have some doubling on Euplorimbus Unum. Look at that. That's pretty cool. Um, this coin's not in as good a shape. Doesn't have that cameo appearance like that other one. Um, even though, you know, this is an ungraded toned proof, um, I can definitely see one, two, three lines of separation here. Um, let's look at the front and see if it's got that weakness on the face just to confirm. That's, it looks pretty normal. I can see his eye there. Um, it's not the same as the other example. Like if right here was weak, like like it was part of the field right in, right inside of his, uh, his nose right there, um, his eye socket kind of, it is kind of weak, but not as weak as that example. Um, I'm sure there's various die stages of this variety. Um, let's go see what uh, these coins have been selling for, just for approximate value. So, look at this. I believe my coin would probably grade out just a regular proof in 65 if I get this variety designated. We're looking at possibly 350 What did I pay for this coin? About 35 bucks. So um, I like to uh, hunt my varieties and I like to study everything and just know. Um, knowing, I mean, knowledge can put some money in your pocket even when the price of silver is getting pretty high. Um, I like to find things like this. So in years to come when I want to retire, these are coins I'd, I'd like to grade um, and have them sold in future, uh, you know, when I get older. Um, let's look at one more coin we have here. Now, there's a pretty valuable VAM to look for on the 1924 piece dollar. It's called the E on the reverse. So that E on the word we is going to be right there. So let's go take a peek at the microscope and some information from VAM World. Right here is what it looks like on VAM World. It says clash die with almost full incused E from we of a from the obverse die clash marks near the top of the eagle's left wing right here. Um, I do not see it on my coin. So it's very nice to have this microscope, by the way. Um, just had a new a new update on this thing. But um, I basically go through VAM world, and I just want to look at the ones that are actually going to add some premium. So you want to go sc scrolling through here, say Elite 30 or Top 50 or something like that. Those are really the ones that are actually worth some money. So let's take a peek at another one here. Um, see what we got here. Die cracks. I didn't see that on here. Uh, I would have noticed that right away when I purchased it. Um, let's see here. That's another die break. How about broken jaw die break? Hmm. 
Let's take a peek and see if what we have. I did not look there. Uh, we do not have that. Um, as you can see, we do not have that spot. So, um, but you know what? To pay 30 bucks for a decent piece dollar, and it's not the 1922 or 23, which are, I'm sick to death of them. I do have lots of them, but I love the staining on this thing. It's beautiful. Um, why not? Stack some silver, right? Well, everybody, I hope this video was fascinating um, because maybe you have some really nice Franklins and you probably just want to get, you know, do a little more detective work and really examine and get close because they're so fun. I love Franklin half dollars, especially the ones in the mid 50s. Um, some proof coins I really do adore. Um, the reason why I bought the piece dollars is just because, you know, it's in decent shape. Um, I don't believe it's been clean because I took it to the light at an angle. Um, AU condition, that's what I like to have. I don't like to have problem coins. He actually had an entire red box full of silver dollars. I just thumbed through them. I was like, dude, I just really wasn't quite my cup of tea. Um, but I like to collect what I like to collect. And um, I'm always thinking about markets. And, you know, these are pretty hot items. And, you know, if I can flip and make some money on these in the future, why not? Why not? Um, varieties, I think, are key when you're, when you're uh, coin collecting. It's more than just a hobby. This, in my opinion, these are really hard assets. And um, when you start to uh, get knowledgeable about varieties, it starts to become an investment in that point. Because, you know, you're going to make close to you know double your money some in some cases 5x um, you can do pretty well if you hunt some really nice specimens like so forth um, that are in mint condition because the the higher the grade of a coin is and you do find a variety or it has a full strike designation on it it's just going to increase the value of that coin a lot more than a coin that's not in uncirculating condition or if it's been cleaned or has any problems um, there's nothing wrong with buying a coin that's been graded. I always like to look at them because sometimes, like I said on my previous video, people grade coins all the time not knowing that it has a variety on it and they just get it graded. Um, that information gets, gets slipped through a lot. So don't be, you know, walking by slab coins thinking, hey, they're charging too much, but in some cases... You can find a diamond in the rough and only spend 40 bucks or 100 bucks or maybe only $180 in that case. Uh, as long as you're going to double your money or better than that, it doesn't matter. It's in your favor. You're in the driver's seat. If you guys like what I had to say, please give me a big thumbs up. It really helps YouTube algorithms get my videos out to people like you. And don't forget to subscribe. It doesn't cost you anything. And don't forget to click that bell icon so you're notified that a new video has popped up. Thank you for tuning in, my friends, and I'll see you next time.